We have with us Mr. Shreda sir, coordinator of the Aleko Aja Banjara Academy, who will be orienting us on managing a pre-primary school in recent trends. Please sir. So do we give it now or? No, but this one I'll look at. No problem. That can be given at the end. Because once I want to explain it, and then we can... Uh, now it's audible? Am I audible? Yes. Uh, very good morning to all of you. And uh, whenever I see, whenever I get a phone call and I see Dr. Rajesh's number on my cell phone, I feel very thrilled because I think this is an opportunity for me to come here again. I have always enjoyed coming to school and uh, interacting with the teachers or with the parents. It's been a real great pleasure for me to be here every time. And uh, whether the audience enjoy the program or not, I have always enjoyed uh, standing here or being on the stage and talking to you all, all of you. So today when uh, he invited me and he said, can you talk to the pre-primary school teachers, most of them are pre-primary school, I felt that this was a, a thrilling opportunity for me to talk on a subject that's very close to my heart. You know, when, as a counsellor, we are all practicing counsellors at our academy and day in and day out we see students coming to us from all walks of life. And sometimes we feel as a, as a child comes into the 10th class, 12th class and then they come to us because they have a problem or they bring a high school student to us saying that there is an issue at home or there is an issue at school, can you please look into it. I have always felt that I wish these children or the parents came to us at a very much earlier stage. You know, if they had come to us right in the beginning, if a problem is there, if they had come to us at the pre-primary level and said, something is happening with my child, can you... Because if you look at most of the problems, the problems do not happen on a single day. Right? When, when we look at children, it's not about the, the problem is started today only in the ninth class or 8th class. Things just build up. Right? When we look at the... Uh, we look at the depression in children in today's world. So depression is a word we used to hear only when people became older or, you know, after marriage, people became depressed or after something incident happened in their life, only people became depressed. I'm not saying everybody becomes depressed after marriage. Okay, that's not the <laughs> idea. But what I'm saying is that depression always used to be something that comes much later in life. But when you look at today's world, one is the maturity of the children's age is coming down. You know, earlier the sexual maturity or what we call the children became mature at a much later age. We used to say that when they came to the teens, they would be maturing, you know, 12, 13, 14, that was what teenage was all about. But today we find that the sexual maturity is coming down with age. You know, even today at 9 and 10 you find uh, children are sexually maturing. So along with that what is happening is even the depression age is coming down. You know, people, children are becoming depressed at much younger and younger age. And that is really frightening for us when we think of it that when a child, let us say of 10 or 12 years, he comes up and he says he's not interested in studies, he's not interested in anything. Or we find even children at that age can even contemplate thinking of taking their own life. You know, we have heard that, we have seen in the papers of young children committing suicide by jumping off the building or something like that. It's really shocking to us as people that how can this allow to happen. So today what I want to talk about is a mindset that each of us has a mindset, children have a mindset and as pre-primary teachers we are in a wonderful position of moulding these young minds. Right? Can we mould them in such a way that they won't be thinking of depression part of it, right? So coming to the depression part of it itself, when we say that somebody is depressed, there are three thoughts running in their head. Whether it's a child, whether it's an adult, there are three thoughts that's constantly running in a person's mind when they are feeling depressed. Perhaps you can check out with somebody who is close to you who is undergoing a depression or if you yourself have faced depression at some point in life. One thing I want to tell you is all of us will face depression at some point in life. Right? It is very normal to have a low in our life. We always have ups and downs in our life. So we will all have go through a phase of depression in our own life too. We do that. So when we do that, what is the thinking that goes on? Often we come out of this depression. Some children are not able to come out of this depression. So today my focus is on can we look at the mindset of a child and help them to come out of this phase of where they give up about the whole thing. So like I said, there are three pillars of a depressive mind. You know, if the mind is depressed, they are thinking of three things. The first thing that, that a child or an adult is thinking when they are depressed is, I am no good. 
Right? This is a thought that enters their head that I am no good, I am worthless, I am a useless person, I can do nothing well. This is the first thought that enters in a child's mind that I am no good. The second thought that enters a person's mind when they are in a depression state is the world is no good. Right? First is I am no good, I am useless, I am absolutely not worthy of anything. The second thought that enters their mind is that the world is no good. Not, nothing about the world is good. Right? They look at everybody, they just can't get along with any, anyone at all. If you look at a person who is depressed, they just can't get along with anyone. Everybody in the, they meet in their life, they find have something or the other to complain about. Let's, uh, let us suppose you walk from here about half a kilometer with a person who is depressed. He look at everything and say complaining about it. Look at the auto driver, look at how he is driving. Look at that man, he's going without the helmet. Is this the way to go? Look at this footpath. Is this the way the BMP maintains? There's a whole list of complaints from here to for half an hour, if you ten uh, ten minutes if you travel you think he'll have ten complaints about the rest of the world. Right? A person who is depressed will not find anything good about the world. You find the rest of the world is not okay. I am not okay, the rest of the world is also not okay. And the third and most important factor that affects a depression mind is tomorrow is hopeless. Tomorrow is completely hopeless. Now these three things, I am no good, the world is no good and tomorrow is hopeless. The moment these three thoughts enter a mind, it's over. Like they give up, what's the point? Right? I am no good, tomorrow, the world is no good and tomorrow also it's going to be like this. So why make an effort at all? Right? Why make an effort? Because any effort that I make has no consequences for it. So if you look at mindset, what I am talking about here is when we face failure, all of us will face failure. When we face failure, what are we thinking for ourselves? This determines whether this person will come out of this phase and go ahead or will succumb to the depression and be a depressed person and give up the whole thing in life. Right? So there are two kinds of mindsets that are psychological, psychologists have defined as there is one thing called a fixed mindset. There is another thing called a growth mindset. All of us either fall into one way or the other or we are in the continuum of sometimes we are in the fixed mindset, sometimes we are in the growth mindset. Let me take you through what is a fixed mindset and what is a growth mindset? A fixed mindset person believes that all my intelligences, all my talents and skills are inborn. Right? So when we look in, when we enter a class, we find that some children are intelligent, some children take it very easily, some children are extremely talented, and some children are not. Right? So if you have a fixed mindset, you start believing in that this child is intelligent, he will continue to be intelligent. And this child is not intelligent and nothing can be done about him. Right? That is a fixed mindset. You come with a fixed mindset that intelligence is given. You are born with an intelligence or you are not born with an intelligence. Or there is a skill, there is a talent, that's it. This person can sing, this person can't sing. This is a fixed mindset. It is like all your traits, your personality traits, your, uh, uh, your skills and talents are carved in rock. And that's it. Nothing can be done to change it. This person will shine, this person will not shine. Now we completely dismiss a whole set of children who are not as so-called intelligent as the rest of them. Right? Whereas suppose you have a growth mindset. If you have a growth mindset, you'll start looking at people and saying that this person can become intelligent. This person has talents which can be sharpened. This person has skills which can be honed. Right? We can do this. Growth mindset always looks like what is the potential this child has. A fixed mindset thinks this child's potential is already defined. Whether it is at pre-primary level, whether it is high school level, or whether it, as an adult, when you look at yourself, do you think that everything that you have is already been achieved? That's a fixed mindset. You know, your, your potential is already defined. I can do only these things. I can't do anything more because I don't know how to do it. What we forget is that in a growth mindset, we say that potential is not known. The potential of this child is not known today. Right? I am here as a teacher to see how I can raise his potential to whatever is possible. Right? If it's a fixed mindset, we say, no, this is guy is intelligent, that's it. These children are not intelligent, they will never be intelligent. We give up on these kind of things. Again, to understand the differences between uh, growth mindset and uh, fixed mindset, what happens when you are challenged? What happens when you are challenged? If you are challenged, the, the fixed mindset will say, I can't do this. 
I will do only things I am comfortable with. Right? I am good at these things, I will do only these things. Because I always want to prove that I am intelligent. I never want to show people that I can also fail. Right? But when you look at the growth mindset, the growth mindset is always like, is this a new thing? Let me try it. Maybe I will fail but I will learn something new. Right? The entire focus of the growth mindset is, can I learn something from this? So when a challenge is given, the growth fixed mindset people will not take the challenges. Suppose now, let us say at whatever your current age is, you have been good at teaching a particular subject. Tomorrow suppose somebody says, why don't you learn music? Like he said about Chambay Vajinata Bhagavatar or Esudas or so many other fantastic musicians are there. He says, I will encourage you for learning Carnatic music or whatever classical music. How many of you want to learn it? How many of you will raise your hands? How many of you will raise, if Subramaniam sir says, tomorrow the school will sponsor, a, will bring in a teacher, will bring in a fantastic teacher who can teach you classical music at this age, whatever be your age. We will pay for the teaching thing. You just have to learn. How many of you will be willing to learn? Right? I, I really need to give one round of applause for you people for raising your hands because that shows a growth mindset. It says, whatever be my age, what stops me from learning something new? Right? If you have a fixed mindset, you will feel like, at this stage you want me to learn something new. Hmm? Like I am already a mother, I am a grandmother, I am a great grandmother. This time should I learn something new? Right? This is the fixed mindset. And why does that happen? Because a fixed mindset person believes, what if I learn this and I fail? Right? I am going to show to the entire world that I am not as intelligent as people think I am. Right? Now, it, now people have this view that this particular person is so much intelligent, is so much capable and all that. Now suddenly Subramanian sir is offering me to learn music and I go there and learn music. My, I don't know where is Sa, I don't know where is Pa, I am singing all uh, no, wrong notes. And everybody will look at me and mock me. Right? So I don't want to be mocked, I want to be this perfect person. Right? A fixed mindset person has got these things off. I am already a perfect person, I want to remain a perfect person. Whereas the growth mindset person will think, I am a work in progress. I am a work in progress. I have got a long way to go. Let me learn something new. If a new challenge comes up, let me take that challenge up. There was an interesting experiment done by psychologists. They took a few children into two different camps. Those who had growth mindset and those who had fixed mindset already. They gave them a test to see if this child belongs to the fixed mindset group or a growth mindset group. They divided them into two. They gave them a challenge. They said, this puzzle you need to solve. So both the people solved the puzzles. Then the psychologist came up and said, now we are going to again jumble up the puzzles. Do you want to do the same puzzle or do you want to do a more difficult puzzle? <coughs> the people, the children who were in the fixed mindset said, we will do the same thing. Why? I know how to do it. I know how to do it. I can prove to everybody how wise or how intelligent I am by doing the same thing again and again. Whereas the, the children in the growth mindset, they were saying that, why should I do the same thing? I already know how to do it. Right? It is boring to do the same thing. Give me something more challenging. Right? So when a challenge comes up, do you take it or do you not take it? That defines whether you are in a growth mindset or in a fixed mindset. Then when it comes to obstacles, suppose you are trying to do something. There is always going to be an obstacle for every child. Right? When that comes in, do you say, okay, this is something obstacle, how do I overcome this obstacle? Or do you say, no, this obstacle is too much, let me just leave it here, I don't want to take it forward. The moment you come to an obstacle, for whatever you are doing, do you give it up or do you continue doing it? This also defines whether you are in a growth mindset or in a fixed mindset. And then when it comes to effort, when we look at children, what do we praise in them? We always praise the end results of a child's work. Right? We look at the end result and say, oh fantastic, you have solved this problem, great. So, suppose somebody solves the problem the fastest, right? he has not made any effort. Right? He has not made any effort, he has just solved the problem for you. You feel like this child is fantastic, he has solved the problem so fast. Right? Whereas, whereas uh, when you look at a child who is making an effort, who is making an effort to solve your problem, we feel like he is taking too much time. No, he is taking too much time to solve a problem, which means he is not intelligent enough. We, which means that we are not willing to respect effort. 
We are only looking at the end result. Who solved the quickest is the most intelligent. Whereas this child is making an effort because I don't know how to do it. Let me make it an effort. So do we praise effort at all? We never praise effort. You know, we always look at a child's result and say, this is what you have done. You have seen, let us say you, you, you are at home, you have seen your child studying hard for an exam. He goes to the exam, he writes and comes back and says, Mom, I think I wrote the exam very well. What would you say? Let the results come. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? That's what we say. Do we say, oh, I saw you doing three days of hard work. It must have been really, you are putting that effort. Do I ever praise an effort? Right? People with growth mindset will praise effort. People with fixed mindset will say, let the results come. We look at the results and then decide whether you are done your work or you are not done your work. And then when it comes to criticism, this is another way in which we handle Growth mindset people and fixed mindset people. Fixed mindset people look at criticism and say this person is attacking me. The moment somebody criticizes you, you look at that criticism as somebody attacking you for who you are. Because I'm already intelligent, I'm already wise, how is this person coming and attacking me? But as a person with a growth mindset, But I am very happy that uh, our blog education officer, Mr. Ramesh is here to uh, start off this uh, lovely function and say he got a little delay due to traffic on the way. So taking this opportunity, I would like to extend him a very, very warm welcome. He has always been a guide and a mentor to our school. Yes.